Number 11, we have to draw the curves and then look at the area that's between them. Uh, so this one's a little bit trickier to draw, right? Because we do have um, this function over here. And to draw it, we kind of just have to reason out um, <clears throat> how it looks like. So we do have our regular parabola that goes like this, right? And this, um, this relates an input to its square. So we do know the shape of an input to its square, right? Uh, when we have x is equal to y squared, we're also relating an input to its square. However, now we are, um, we are relating it on the x-axis. So it goes like this. It has the same shape, but instead of growing upwards in the y-axis, it'll grow upwards um, on the x-axis. So we're going to transform it just like we regularly transform our graphs. Um, and we do have parallels, right? So if our function, uh, if our original function over here, if we're doing plus or minus one, it'll walk one or um, one upwards or downwards in the y-axis. And the same thing for this one. If we do plus or minus one, it'll walk one um, down or up in the x-axis. So, uh, and same thing, if we put a minus, it'll reflect, it'll start to grow um, to the left. So it's the same idea. So we are going to construct our graph using these transformations. So this is my, my axis. And now I'm going to, we're going to look at one minus y squared. So it does have the shape of a parabola, but now instead of opening upwards uh, on the x-axis, it'll open downwards because it's minus. And also it has a plus one, so we will walk one on the positive direction and the positive direction being on the right to the x-axis. So it goes, this one goes, um, the vertex is at one zero. And then if we were to plot some points here, we would have at, at plus one and minus one. So it goes like, like this. And now let's plot, <clears throat> let's plot the second one. Let's plot this one over here. So this one is, looks also like a parabola. It does open up to the right because it is positive, but it gets shifted one in the negative direction. So the vertex begins at negative one instead. And we also do hit these two points if we were to plot it in or make a table of values. Um, so it goes something like this, yeah. Now we can clearly see <clears throat> that the area between them is this section here. And now we just have to ask, ask ourselves, are we integrating with respect to x or with respect to uh, y? Well, the equations here are expressed as a function of y, so it would be really good for us if we could integrate it um, with respect to y. And to make that choice, we're just going to think about how we are going to calculate these areas. So the area um, given by an integral is actually calculated with a bunch of rectangles that are infinitely thin, as we've seen with the idea of a Riemann sum. So if we do take um, a vertical triangle where the height would be f of x and the width, uh, width would be dx, right, for a little piece of the x-axis, we could see that we don't really consistently have uh, an upper boundary and a lower boundary. Because if I were to take it to the left, the upper boundary and the lower boundary would be the green function. And then if I go to the right, the upper boundary and the lower boundary would be the blue function. So I'd have to divide this into two and it would just be, um, be kind of unpleasant. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna consider horizontal rectangles where now the width is f of y and the height is just dy because for a little piece of the y-axis. And if we do that, we can very clearly see that, you know, no matter where I draw this rectangle, I'm always going to have the blue function as the upper boundary and the green function as the lower boundary. So I can express this as one integral instead of breaking it down into multiple ones. So this is um, what I'm going to do. And we can see here when we did draw our function, right, and we plot it, um, these points here are at minus one on the y-axis, and this is plus one. 
Uh, so when I'm going to set up the integral, I'm actually, because they are symmetric, right? And um, to really show this, I, I think I'll highlight it in different colors. So this part over here, the lower part from minus 1 to 1 has the same area as this upper part. From Sorry, from minus 1 to 0 has the same area as from 0 to 1. So instead of doing the integral from negative 1 to 1, which calculates the total area, I can express this as the integral from 0 to 1 and then do twice because I'm multiplying the area by 2. And we can only do this if there is perfect symmetry uh, between the upper part or and the lower part. Um, so this is what we're going to do, and then we're going to express this as 2 times the integral from 0 to 1. And remember that we just have to do now the upper function minus the lower function, which is their width, their length, sorry, times the width, which is dy. So the, sorry, not the upper function because it's not a function, it's an equation, so the upper equation. Uh, so the upper equation looks like it's this one, um, 1 minus y squared, and then minus the lower equation, which is y squared minus 1, and all of this times dy. We cannot forget our width, or else we would not make rectangles and it would not be an area. So we're just going to clean this up a little bit. So that is 2 integral from 0 to 1 minus y squared minus y squared gives us minus 2y squared. And then 1 minus minus 1 is 1 plus 1. So that is plus 2 plus 2, then dy. So when we integrate this, we're just taking the simple power rule, uh, reverse power rule, and this goes twice uh, minus 2y cubed over 3 plus 2y from 0 to 1. Um, and now applying our boundaries is very easy because all we have to do is apply the upper boundary because um, the lower boundary will give us zero. So that is 2 times minus 2 thirds times 1 squared is minus 2 thirds, and then plus 2 times 1, plus 2, and then the lower boundaries, we just ignore them, because that would be zero, right? So this does give us uh, 2 times minus 2 thirds plus 2 is 4 over 3. So this gives us 8 over 3. And that is the area between these two curves. So I hope it was uh, easy for you guys to understand why it is that we chose to integrate it with respect to y and not with respect to x. It has everything to do with the orientation of our rectangles, and we should always choose them such that we can express it e easily in one integral instead of having to break it up into multiple integrals because the upper and the lower boundaries change. Um, and then we just, instead of computing the whole from minus 1 to 1, we just saw that it was symmetric, and then we doubled the area from 0 to 1.